Hi everyone and welcome to my backyard garden. Thank you so much for clicking in. If this is your first time seeing this face, my name is Mecca. I live in the south of England. I grow most of my vegetables on my allotment. But this is my home kitchen garden. And come with me and I'll show you what exactly I'm growing here at this time of the year. I've got my raised beds. Mainly, I got this bed mainly for strawberries. But then the strawberries died. And this was because we had bad compost last year. Like half of this bed was strawberries, literally. So what I decided to do, I planted onions. As you can see, the onions are doing good. Um, did last year and doing this year. I've got some peas over there. I am using worms to compost, I'll show you. This is like a bit of a warm compost, like a sub pod thing. It's an experiment, see how it goes. And then these strawberries I grew from seed, yes. They're a special variety, they don't have side shoots or runners. So I decided to grow them from seed. And look, I've got flowers. They were from seed from last year. So fingers crossed we'll have a good harvest. Now this area is meant to be my herb garden. This is an old recycled bathtub. But then I haven't got enough herbs established there. However, what I do have, I have my thyme in pots and I've got a little flower there. I've got oregano in bags. So oregano doing really, really well in grow bags. And here I've got coriander self-seeded, a few coriander or cilantro like the Americans call it. I've got some wild rocket, I believe that's mixed with my kale there. Some kale and some more onions and garlic. Now this second bed is my garlic bed and it's also my tomato bed. So over here I'm growing garlic, a few overwintering onions and my tomatoes will be in here. These are the first tomatoes so what i usually like doing i do like a trial before the frost date so i normally use cloches something like that i use cloches to protect them until until after the frost date so they have survived a couple of weeks although look at this pepper can you see what the slugs have done to it yeah decimated it but it will hopefully survive you can see little shoots come in there it will hopefully come back to life and now i know i'm ready to plant out but today we're planting some sweet corn or corn it's a bit of a mixture of sweet corn and maize and also runner beans or bolotti beans they've gone a bit long and beginning to tangle and i don't want that so i'm gonna plant them out the plants are having a nice sun bath <laughs> they're hardening enough so this happens every day i bring them out for a few hours and i increase the time they spend outdoors the tomatoes are looking so good. They're a little bit leggy, but hardening enough is beginning to help them establish and get, you know, thicker stems. And the thicker stems will help them be stronger. Also, this year, I haven't planted a lot of tomatoes. So last year, I planted 40 plants. And that was really good. But it was difficult for me to manage in the you know, the season when I had to bring them, just imagine having enough 40 plants. I've got less than half of that, about 18 plants now. So this year, my plan will be to use side shoots. So I'm going to take, let me show you what the side shoot would look like. I'm looking for one. I'm going to take, can you see the little side shoots? So these are side shoots. Okay. When it grows, I'm going to cut it off, dip it in water, and it will give me another plant. So I can get 40 plants and that's my little plant. They might be slightly behind, but not by a lot because they will be well established roots and they will hopefully start fruiting in July, August. So that's my plan for my tomatoes this year. Let me know in the comment section how you coping because, because we have to move things around, the <laughs> juggling act. It's a bit difficult to actually grow so many plants. So this is what I do. Now my sweet corn, I've grown them over three different stages so these ones were sown a whole month ago these ones were sown two weeks two weeks ago actually and this one about 10 days ago these are sweet sweet corns okay these are my chinese purple corns like they're my favorite starchy variety they do take a little bit longer so they need to be started a slightly earlier however they give you a really really good yield for the first time ever this year i'm growing my corn at home 
in containers. Now, I have grown them in ground at home before. The only thing I found is I have really poor sunlight in my home garden. Sweet corn needs a lot of sun, especially the starchy variety. So this year, I'm using these, I don't know, are they 20, 30 liter containers? And I'm going to sow a few here. The difficulty is the sunlight. So I'll show you what my garden is like in the middle of the day with sun. So we've got beautiful sunlight. You can see shadows, obviously. And I really didn't want to put anything <laughs> in front of these beds because the beds look really good without anything there. But I just want to try growing sweet corn here because at the allotment, we have foxes and wild animals eating them. Now, last year, I grew potatoes in this space here, sort of hidden away from the beds, but they didn't do well. And I'm not sure if we've got really good sunlight there. I've, although I've got the apple trees on either side, so I'm not sure if that's affected, because let me give you a better view, if that's affected them there. But then guaranteed, I will have good sunlight on this side. So this is what will happen this year. Some will be growing there, some will be growing there, and the most of it will still grow at the allotment. I'm tempted to grow some on the border here. Those holes are for my beans, okay? That's going to climb up there. I'm tempted to do that, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. So let's show you the rest of the garden, what we have at this time of the year. Forget the mess. <laughs> my neighbors have refused to put a fence over there forever. So we got to see their mess as well. Okay. Now my pear tree for the first time is fruiting. Look at this. Look, it's so exciting. These are my conference peers and i have fruit like can i give you a view around the place this is the fourth year and we have fruits now obviously it's not going to be a lot last year i had a few flowers but not many but this year i'm seeing fruit pollination in most of the branches so i'm really really excited for it it's still a young tree so <laughs> let's just keep our fingers crossed that we'll have some Look at that, we'll have some fruit, a few at least. My apple, on the other hand, this apple tree fruits first, is an earlier one. Flowers are in situ. And this one hasn't even flowered yet. It's been fruiting, this is a third year it will fruit. This is a green apple and that is a golden, a red one. The, the names, one is Bright Future and the other one is a Ten Commandments. A sage is doing amazingly well. As you can see, flowering. I think I'm going to give this a, a little prune this year. Back to the herb side I was showing you. So oregano, I've got mint that's meant to grow down there, but it's not happening. And look there, look here. These peas are looking so good. They look so good. I hid them here, protected them from the elements. And I put this little basket or racks mesh over here just to keep them to trellis up there and hopefully we'll start picking peas or flowers soon i hope on the other hand these ones were sown exactly the same day but these are without cover on the raised bed and these have been protected by a glass frame just next to this old bathtub there's a big difference protection from wind in spring is really really vital for your early crops and then Celery is still left here and some radicho or chicroy, but I will get rid of most of them. I should get rid of most of them soon. On the border, after the pear tree, this is a spineless or thornless blackberry. It did really well. This is the second year. It seemed to have established and it will go over the arch just like that over there. Now, black currants are doing so well. I'm happy with this. I took some cottons and last year these cottons fruited, but I think our harsh winter really affected them. I, I do have some black currants at the allotment, thankfully. I've got this golden fennel, bronze fennel it's called, and it's covered in aphids. Can you see the aphids over there? Fennel seems to attract a lot of aphids and yeah, I'm not really bothered because the ladybugs will start coming in soon. but. This is what you have here. So if you pick fennel in the spring, make sure you give it a good wash, a very good wash. 
I've got here, this is um, Ajwani Olovich and some, it's not oregano, it's what's the other one called? I'll remember the name and I'll put it in the description box. It was gifted to me. I think oregano tastes way better than these, but that's what these are. Another herb like oregano. This will be my potatoes. I will plant potatoes here. They did really well here last year, so they will come back. I've got a few, you know, volunteer seedlings here and a few onions that I will take out before the potatoes. So let's go ahead and plant out some of our seedlings. Shall we start? Now, I'll show you something about the corn. Corn is shallow rooted, but also it grows really fast. So can you see the root structure there? As a result, I need to use what we call root trainers. Now, these are special books. They are books. Can you see how it's opened? Let me show you that again. That's a book. It opens like so. And look at that structure. Look at that. That is so good, isn't it? That is so good. So we're going to start by putting that in there. These root trainers are quite deep. I have to make really deep holes. And I thought I did, but obviously not. So I'm just going to use my lovely hurry hurry knife and make the holes a little bit bigger just so I can guide the corn plants all the way in because I want to ensure that it's well and truly buried. Something I have to do with those corns, I have to stake the plants because as you can see, it's quite leggy. So I'm just gonna put a, a little bamboo stake and just tie it. Now the best way to tie your stake or to stake your plant is to tie the stick and then you just put that around the plant. This will ensure that the plant hasn't got a tight tie on it, but also prevent it from running all over the place. Have a little movement, but not too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll finish up this corn and I'll let you see what the result is like. If you haven't yet, please kindly consider subscribing to our channel. It means a lot and help more people like me and you grow food and enjoy a happy, healthy life in the outdoors. If you're also enjoying this video, give us a thumbs up and also share this video to your loved ones and your friends and let them know how possible it is to grow your own food in your home in a small space. My backyard garden is really small, but I'm able to grow all this and I'm really grateful I can. Even if you haven't got outdoor space now look i'm growing this in containers people are growing corn in balconies so just do something as little as possible to grow your own food and i am sure you will not regret this next up will be planting my beans now i always try to use this mixture so i have cow manure blood fish and bones seaweed and eggshells now beans we know is a nitrogen fixer however this soil in my back garden is very poor. It's mainly topsoil and clay. And it's not very, it's not, I haven't done no dig here because I haven't got enough compost at home for that. So I focus mainly on my raised beds. And then on this side borders, I plant things that are not really that hungry. However, I still plant beans here. So this is the reason i put a bit of that into the soil now this is all tangling up let me show you this is why i'm planting them out now because once they start looking for how to climb up it becomes a bit difficult i will go ahead and i'll just pop one in each hole just have to be really careful with these they're quite delicate at this stage here needs to be taken or else you lose them just opening that this is so beautiful these root trainers in my opinion are the best things for growing deep rooted plants like beans and corn and you have healthy plants that are ready and well established to go into the soil so just take them out gently always Now, for best germination, 
when you plant sweet corn try and ensure you sprout them now this one hasn't really sprouted properly but i've got a few shoots i've soaked it overnight it still looks shriveled it has been soaked sprouting it just helps you ensure you have successful in your germination so what i'm doing now i will be planting a few seeds and then we'll compare notes okay not too deep that's a bit deep just a bit out there two in a hole two in a hole and one last one so let's see what happens and finally we're gonna give everything in the garden a very good soak ensure your plants have a good drink of water even if it rains just do this before you leave it as you can see the weather is a bit on and off so i'm gonna give it a good soak well just reduce the pressure so the seedlings are not really damaged so guys thank you thank you for watching if you've watched all this point this is the final water beans are looking happy fingers crossed everything will be fine but i'll just keep an eye on them and i'll update you on my container sweet corn over there look at them looking pretty good i'll update you and let you know how it does just to encourage you to grow your own if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up also subscribe please if you haven't and i will see you in the next video and yes please do not forget to turn on your post notifications it lets you know when next i upload a new video until next time i will see you in another video bye